All right, everyone, welcome. We're going to go over exercise today, and the biggest question and the biggest issues I have with this are, are you ready for it? And I don't want to be the guy that's been telling you that you shouldn't exercise because I think it's great for you, but um, are you causing yourself more harm than good? You know, if you um, look at this guy, he's all hunched over. You know, if we had another view of him, probably one hip was higher than the other. You know, um, forcing your... your your body into 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 running when when you have bad posture and imbalanced muscles and, and, and just overall like forward head translation like this guy's got and he's forcing himself out there it is he might be doing himself more harm than good and and you know he's killing his joints and arthritis is going to develop so this video is about getting your body into a better position to exercise so i'm not going to be talking about what you should be doing as far as exercise but more about how to get your body into a neutral posture with balanced muscles and we'll get more into that as we go here so the, for, the first rule of exercise is the same as in in life size which is we talked about in the other other videos and that's proper form so it's working uh, smarter and not harder yeah definitely quality over quantity and anything worth doing is worth doing with proper form and proper posture so every day is core day you always want to be preparing your stance and visualizing your movements and making sure that you're locked in your core and the frag muscles that we talked about before you know the neck flexors and the abdominals and the glutes and um, in this video I'm going to attack various um, uh, postures such as sway back and you know posterior pelvic tilt and and in the other videos we did a lot of anterior pelvic tilt the upper cross lower cross syndrome talk so we're going to talk about the opposite of that and, and what you could be doing to help that so core day everything's core proper form if you got a mirror you're at a gym you know um, check yourself out you know look at your form make sure you're doing things right um, respect your weights you know this girl maybe she was just picking up that weight improperly over there just to get going you know even I mean when you're in, when you're in the gym exercises starts right off the bat and that continues that through your life. You always got to pick things up properly. You got to do things with proper form. Can't be messing around. Kettlebell's a great exercise. We went over those in the other videos. So if you can't do something right, it's best not to do it at all. So, um, you know, sometimes sit-ups are not the greatest things for you. You're pulling on your head. You're forcing bad curves in your neck. So I'm um, finding the right exercises for you is important too and avoiding the ones that are harder to do when we have imbalanced muscles the tighter and stronger muscles will take over and force your body into bad habits and you just continually strengthen those muscles instead of strengthening the weak muscles and it's not what you do half the time it's how you do it not always true going into what we do all day life for size is important because that prepares you to exercise it brings you into the neutral posture if you're going into the gym expecting to fix everything without first neutralizing yourself it's not going to happen the tight muscles are going to get even stronger and the weak muscles are going to get even weak weaker and you're going to get more and more imbalanced and you know trauma over time here's a x-ray of a neck we got bony spurs in the front Maybe they've been overworking uh, one side of their neck in the back, and it's all weak, weak neck flexors, no support. Uh, the discs are getting compressed from bad angles and the head being too forward, creating extra pressure and weight on the spine. So first we're gonna talk about, actually this is the main thing we're gonna talk about, is correcting pelvic tilt. And you should definitely see a chiropractor and get diagnosed about this or a physical therapist or something like that to figure out if you have one of these because most people do they have one or the other and um what we also see is that one hip might be higher than the other left to right so you want to get that corrected for sure and and this pelvic tilt is really on you to correct no chiropractor can do this for you know um Physical therapists can help you because they're going to be strengthening the weakened muscles. Because there's weak muscles and there's tight muscles involved with these pelvic tilt. So we need to look at how to fix that. So um, on the left here, we see the anterior pelvic tilt. So the hip is rotated forward. 
and the butt sticking out more. And the opposite to the posterior pelvic tilt. So we got the tightness here and the hip is rotating back. Usually what I see as a chiropractor is one hip is doing this more than the other. And I can level that out, but usually generally it's going more anterior or posterior. Usually you're going towards either side. The ASIS here is that bone you feel in the front of your hips. That's called the anti anterior superior iliac spine. So that's that part of your pelvis in the front. So if it feels like it's up higher or down lower, you might have an idea of where you're at, but I definitely consult with somebody because you can trick your mind into thinking you're one way or the other. Here's another look at it. So on the left here, we have the anterior pelvic tilts. Usually we're gonna get the lordotic back, which means that this lordosis is increased. You want a little curve here, but you don't want too much. So when it rolls forward, it has a tendency to take the spine with it. And then the opposite we see here with the posterior pelvic tilt is the straighter spine. So if you notice you have a really straight back, there's not much curve there. You got the flatter butt, you got the really tight hamstrings. And then there's different forms of that. You can have the posterior pelvic tilts. I see this a lot uh, with women is the, the sway back posture. <clears throat> so that's where the thoracic curve, which you can't really see here, is really pushed back. So they got the posterior pelvic tilt with that increased thoracic curve. Some people are just straight as a board. So that can be confusing to you because you'd be like, oh yeah, I have lordosis because my, my hips feel forward from my shoulders. But then it might not be true. So you, know, you definitely want somebody looking at you <clears throat> All right, anterior tilt on the left. So anterior means it's going forward. So there's the front and it's rolling forward. So, so these are the tight muscles here. So we got the tight hip flexor, which is the iliopsoas coming into your femur here. We got the tight erector spinae. Those are the ones in the back of your spine attaching you know, from the top of your pelvis, sacrum area going up to your ribs very tight in there sometimes you think that's tight and that's actually it's overstretched which is more posterior this happens because the curve of the spine is increased so these muscles going up from here are actually tightening and pulling down increasing that curve you can almost think of that like a bow and arrow over here on the right we have the posterior pelvic tilt so we have the very tight rectus abdominis at the bottom this is from sitting all day in a certain position kind of like your hips are rocked back so the abs are constantly kind of holding you together right here and then we got the tight gluteus maximus and medius on the side there and the very tight hamstrings which is very opposite of this because then we have the tight rectus femoris and if you watch the other um, videos on the muscle synergy you know that uh, <clears throat> hamstrings and the quads, the rectus femoris are working opposite of each other. What one is doing, the other one's doing the opposite of. So that's all about finding the balance. So we know we're talking about the tight muscles, but we're forgetting about this picture is really forgetting about the weak muscles, which you got to strengthen because you can loosen up these tight muscles all day. But if you're not strengthening the weak ones, whoop, right back to where it was. All right. So we talked a lot about in the other videos that anterior pelvic tilt this is pretty much lower cross syndrome it's very similar we hit this a lot in the other videos so it's where the x you see the tight muscles hip flexor iliopsoas same as the other picture tight director spine which we talked about got the weak abs got the weak glutes so strengthen those so that's very different than posterior pelvic tilt we got this guy doing a plank this is there's a lot of, I'm going to put a link at the bottom for videos you can look at other people because everyone goes over this and uh, there's a chiropractor does a great job with his videos, uh, what you can do to correct each of these. But I'm just going to go through a few things just to, to help you understand why you should correct this and, and what are some of the easier uh, exercises to do. So we can't do a plank, obviously don't try this one. But um, in the left side here, he's forcing the anterior pelvic tilt. So if you had posterior pelvic tilt, You'd want to put your body into this position. You're completely reversing it. So if you have posterior pelvic tilt, this is going to help strengthen these erector spinae muscles. It's also going to stretch a little bit here in the hamstrings and help strengthen your hip flexors. 
opposite goes for you if you have anterior pelvic tilt you want to put your butt into posterior pelvic tilt so you're rotating it into posterior taking the pelvis rocking it back stretching out the rectus spine and out doing the opposite strengthening the abs so you can almost do a you can think about it doing like a cobra pose for posterior pelvic tilt and more the downward dog for the anterior pelvic tilt or a bridge this one's for anterior pelvic tilt we're going to hit anterior pelvic tilt from now on for a little bit so holding on to something or getting your butt to drop down you'll notice when you do a squat if you have anterior pelvic tilt your butt's going to want to stick out just because of those tight erector spinals so this really stretches them in this position you can do a little left to uh, right swing motion very gradually this is just to stretch you out so the idea is you're doing these things before you're getting into your workout it's good to warm up first for about five minutes get the blood flowing to the muscles and then hit these because you don't want to strain or sprain anything so yeah just going down as far as you can might be a little hard on the knees for some of you so just um, go at your own pace there and do what you can do easier way to do this if you're in a lot of pain you can't do the squat you can do this one laying on your back with the knees bent and you're pretty much sucking your belly button down towards your spine you can also do the bridge holding that uh, gut in and you can put your hands on that ASIS bone we're talking about in the front where you feel it sticking out and you can rock that back rocking it into a posterior position and then you're lifting your butt up into the bridge you could do this on a yoga ball too um, I believe he goes over that in that video that I'll have a link for at the bottom and that's a that's the advanced way to really hit that okay switching over to posterior pelvic tilt so um, <clears throat> what, what we can see with posterior pelvic tilt is the sway back posture so we got that increased thoracics the curve is really increased so you can see that the hips will be a lot more forward than the shoulder so one way to do that is get a foam roller or rolled up pillow put it right over the thoracics make sure you support your head and what this does is it pushes upwards on that bad thoracic curve and allows the butt to drop down rocking it into an anterior position this is a little hard to begin with and sometimes the foam roller is a little too much but you can also do a little roll on there sometimes you get some nice pops in the thoracic and again we're gonna have the tight you know hamstrings weak hip flexors so with posterior pelvic tilt you want to do more squats strengthen the hip flexors and make sure you're watching that pelvis forcing it into anterior and you can overcorrect this but it it takes some time and some people you'll just never get there so you can you're always going to be forcing the correction just from you know what you do all day bad habits that you can't break like sitting and you know driving all day or something like that but forces you to be this way so when you're doing the squat for the posterior pelvic tilt <clears throat> you want to stick the butt out opposite see here on the right is what you would do if you had anterior if you're holding on to something you really want to drop that because you're trying to stretch the erector spine and rock that pelvis tilt so this one you're sticking the butt out a little bit all right you also get a little good hamstring stretch there at the bottom too posterior pelvic tilt you want to stretch the hamstrings foam roller is great for that if you don't have a foam roller you can get them at Walmart they're pretty cheap um, you can either do both legs at the same time like this girl's doing or you could bend one knee and focus on Remember, you got two you actually got three hamstring muscles but it pretty much goes in a Y shape so you want to kind of roll a little bit to the left a little bit to the right so you're more getting outside the leg inside the leg do one leg at a time if you really want to get intense if they're really tight you can do them both at the same time kind of work your way into it um, but other videos describe how to foam roll it's not, I'm not really getting into that we're just going over what you need to do to help yourself here and this is a better stretch here so you can reach towards the outside reach towards the inside don't really grab the toe that can be a little hard on your back you don't want to arch yourself up either when you're doing that do both legs bring your toes to your nose get in the calf too calf and hamstrings definitely work together 
Another good one for posterior pelvic tilt. Is the child's pose. Just stretching out the back here. This is actually for anterior pelvic tilt. I don't know why I have this in here. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, you want to do this for anterior pelvic tilt. Because you're dropping the butt down. You're stretching out the lower back. It's not going to hurt you either way. But yeah, definitely anterior pelvic tilt on that one. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, Active Chiropractic's channel. Um, he does some exercises on anterior posterior pelvic tilt that you can check out. And I'll put the links in the description below so you can click on those and watch those. And hopefully you learned something to consider before you really hit the exercises and go out running and you know cause yourself more trouble and if you want your your adjustments your chiropractic adjustments to to stay better doing these exercises throughout the week every day will really help you and become more stable and um you know if the, if the weak muscles are, are strengthened your body be in better alignment so um the bones won't shift out of place all the time and there's always inter you know, injuries that we have that um force us into a certain way so um, a lot of us just, well, it'll be a constant battle, but um, doing these will make you feel much better. And you might have to do them the rest of your life, but it's better than being in pain and spending lots of money on surgeries and, and chiropractic for, you know, every, every week, you know, because you, should, you shouldn't be coming, um, you know, every day, you know, three times a week. That's, that's not what, what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to get out of that that type of care and and get get past the, the plateau of pain and yeah I get I get adjusted once every two weeks I start to feel horrible if I don't um, that's just because of what we do uh, being in the first world sitting in the car sitting here making videos it's not good on our posture but you can definitely battle it with exercises and um, stretch yourself out to get to a better place where you don't have to receive as much care and hurt your wallet like that all righty guys i hope you learned something and check out those other videos and you can uh anything you're looking at stretching you can just you know type it into the search bar and find some videos on there and if you're confused you can talk to me and i do little exercise classes hopefully i'll still be doing these for you guys and you can come and get things right make sure you're doing it right before you hurt yourself so always consult with somebody about how to do things and how to make sure you're doing them right and, not, and then you're not hurting yourself. All right.